My name is Nina Christian. You can find me on Instagram at Nina Christian HQ or Facebook the same, or obviously on LinkedIn at Nina Christian. I help small businesses and people build big brands using content marketing. So in the past, I've been a marketer for 25 years. I've helped a lot of big brands build businesses and do big projects. So looking at content creation and what to do when it is not working. So the first thing that I would encourage anyone to do when their content isn't working is to go back and look at what your goals are, what your intentions are. And one of the biggest things that people don't realize is when they are constantly creating is are they creating strategically with a particular action or outcome or end goal in mind the way you get there may be very different and you may pull in and utilize different forms of content authority and credibility building content and so obviously that's people want to work with people that they trust and so that's a really important thing to build in. And then there is the awareness. People need to know that you even exist and they need to know broadly what you do and who you help. And so there's part of your content that needs to build awareness as well. Now, you can be building awareness, you can be building approachability, and you can be building authority, but without actually having that move customers or people or your audience, your viewers, your listeners, your readers forward in their journey with you. And the reason a lot of people may feel like they're covering all the bases, you know, they might have gotten 365 prompts and prepare your, do your content in five seconds flat for the next three years. And then they've put in their, their work, and it's never five seconds, but then they wonder why it isn't working. Or they slave away on a blog post for hours, especially you see this with, all the time with businesses. They, they put their heart and soul into a blog post and it goes through so many layers of approval and tweaks and refinements and all the rest. And finally it gets out into the world and crickets. Or people realize that, oh, they're gonna be producing content. And so they kind of scramble and just pull in content from wherever and whoever and just slap it out there. And it might be prepared by a random bunch of freelancers or agencies or trying to get staff involved, but it's all very haphazard. The important thing to think about when you're looking at what's not working is what would working look like? If content were benefiting your bottom line, how would that happen? Would that be people contacting you? Would that be people booking appointments on your website? Would it be people recommending you to other people? Would it be people being more loyal and buying from you more often? Would it be more customers and newer people uh, on a more frequent basis? I mean, these are all things that are going to vary greatly depending on the size of your business, depending on the type of business. There's not going to be any one size fits all for that. But if you are a business or a brand or anyone who's growing anything online that is for commercial purposes, you are going to have strategic goals and they're going to be business goals. And so the idea is to then think about how your marketing is going to actually achieve that and then reverse engineer the content piece. So what needs to happen in the end customer's journey and mind, what journey do they need to go through to get from point A to point B. And this is a thing like in marketing, I love the fact that we get to experiment. We get to try new things all the time. We get to show up and what's working this week may not be working next week. I, I know from experience that you know, 90% of marketing plans in 2020 just got shelved or didn't happen, or at least had to get changed because of the environment that we we're in. Campaigns got stopped, companies, businesses went out of businesses, agencies were couldn't do the events or things like that that they had planned. So things had changed a lot, but having your end business goal is still going to be remaining the same in the sense that if you're a business, you have your commercial goals and you have to think about how can marketing actually help you achieve that. 
So when you're looking at what's not working, what would working look like? And back to what I was saying about experimentation. I love experimentation, but only when I'm ex doing this experimentation within a known testing zone, which is I'm all for experimentation and can say, did it work and did it, didn't it work? But I need to know what's my benchmark for did it work and what's my benchmark for didn't work. And that's where I see a lot of people going wrong. They're trying so many different things, but they don't have a clear idea of what they want ideal to look like. So is it actually achieving that specific objective? Is it getting more people onto their email list? In which case you can very clearly see, is it working? Is it getting people who are passive subscribers on your email list to be actively engaging with you and even buying from you? Well, then you can see is what you're experimenting with working to that end? Is it re-engaging previous customers? So all of those things are business goals and from there you can set marketing goals and from there you can set content goals and think, okay, what am I going to put out? And if you then go ahead with a particular line of content strategy and it works, then you can do more of it. If it doesn't work, you have the data and the learnings and then you can try something else. You will have a very clear idea of why it didn't work. Being observant, curious, and intentional are three really big things that are going to put you in good stead for content marketing because I think so many people are more concerned about the volume and just chucking stuff out and I'm all for one for producing a lot of content when it's strategically aligned and putting it out in a way that's going to further your business objectives but heck like I wrote a kind of whole methodology for how you can turn one video like this into 123 pieces of content that's all authentic and building thought leadership and aligned so i'm all for volume and i'm all for systems and i'm all for you know taking what's working and do, doing more of it however i'm also very big on taking a step back and being considered observant and curious around what works and why and why not and i think that's where a lot of people don't take the time to listen they just post 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 without looking at what's working or they will blog or they will produce videos or they'll send a whole lot of emails whatever it is that they're doing for for marketing without paying attention to what's working to the metrics of what's working and so if you are trying to achieve something and you're not paying attention to the little things and thinking all right well <clears throat> all my emails typically sit at around whatever 25 percent open rate that would be pretty good for most organizations this one was at 15. why is that and actually having a look what was different about that email was it the subject line? Was it the length of the email? Was it the time of day that I sent it? These are all going to be hypotheses that you can then go and test like a, a scientist. And from there, start to form conclusions. But if you were not curious, if you were not intentional, if you couldn't even be bothered to look, if you were just throwing a whole lot of mud at the wall, hoping some of it would stick, how are you going to actually then refine and, and optimize and be more efficient and learn from the things that aren't working? One of the things that I love most about what we get to do as marketers with experimenting all the time is that a lot of what we do doesn't work that's just fact I wish it would change it'd be really nice to have the Midas touch with everything and make sure that everything you do works but I guarantee you for anyone who's doing something that's working they've done a whole lot of other things that haven't worked and I know that I know some of the the biggest names in the business like worldwide household names in the marketing space and i'm not going to drop all their names here but you'd be surprised at the number of things that they try that doesn't work 
And the only things that you see are the ones that do work because then they do more of it. But they're constantly testing, constantly experimenting. And when you get into that testing, experimenting, trialing mindset, you then start to become okay with things that don't work because you see that actually start to see it not as failure, but as action that bring you data. And that data is very valuable because that's information that you now have that you can base decisions on that you didn't have before. And so if you see everything that you do as a data gathering exercise, and then you're intentional about having a look at if it does work and if it doesn't work, I wouldn't want you to see it as error in that you've done something wrong. Just think of it like a parent who's trying to get their kids to eat vegetables and healthy foods and things like that. So you might try a whole lot of different things and your toddlers or young children turn their nose up at, at, and don't want to have a bar of it. But then you find that, hmm, well, if I cut the vegetables up and make it look like a star on the plate, then all of a sudden they eat them. Whereas last week when I just dumped them there in a boiled and on a plate in a bowl they tipped it on the floor you think well what you did the first time wasn't an error it wasn't wrong giving the child boiled vegetables in a bowl wasn't wrong but cutting them up and putting them in a fancy shape on a plate that worked so it's not as if there's a, a right way and a wrong way it's more about there's going to be different ways and you need to keep experimenting until you find the way that works. So I love, 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 love the quote by Thomas Edison, who says, I didn't fail 999 times because it took him like a thousand attempts to develop electricity. And on the thousandth approximate time, he, he did it. He goes, well, I didn't fail. I just found 999 ways that didn't work. So if you think of it like that vegetable analogy in that it wasn't a failure, it wasn't wrong, it was just something that didn't work. And apply that to your marketing. At the end of the day, you're out there to hit your commercial goals, you're out there to hit your business goals, and your content strategy should be paving the way for all of that. And if you can do that in a way that's going to set yourself up to then have people calling you, then happy days. But if it takes you some time to figure out what's working and what's not, then you got to do what you got to do in the meantime, right? So I love that. That's so good. So being prepared to, to take things that aren't working as si simply that, something that didn't work and try something else. And I'm not saying that's an excuse to be sloppy because if the reason that it didn't work was because it was full of spelling errors and it had crappy branding and it didn't it was all over the shop and it wasn't well written and it wasn't good content well clearly that's going to be content marketing 101 content marketing is two things it's engaging content and it's marketing and so you've got to start with good content and that would be your learning like if nothing's completely putting out like rubbish stuff and hoping it to work to work that is obviously not a great thing to do being keenly aware of how you can improve how you can test and there is going to be an element of practice but you're going to see like i guess a good time is usually a couple of weeks to a month is a good amount of time to see is something working and listen if you are just starting out and you're publishing content and three people are watching it or one person is liking it and commenting on it well, that's your benchmark and if you do that consistently for a month and still three people are watching your videos and one person is liking it and it's your mum well after giving it a go for a month, you can pretty much say, well, let's try something else. You don't want to do it for a year and say, well, I have to do this for three years before I can test if it's working. A month or so for some sort of incremental feedback of doing the same thing if you're doing something weekly consistently for a month. That's not to say that it's going to be there, that you're going to be like totally nailing it after a month, but you get a sense of 
Is it going in the right trajectory? Am I seeing some sort of in incremental improvements in which you can build on it? Cover it off on aligning it to your strategy, understanding what you're even trying to measure, understanding how to see if what you're doing aligns with your business goals. When you do find something that's working is you want to be really intentional and strategic around capturing the process behind that so you can replicate it on an ongoing basis because that is the trip up of so many marketers is that they can do something once or twice or even three times because they've got a lot of energy they've got a lot of enthusiasm they've got a lot of time on their hands this month and so they can make it happen a lot of people know how to just make it rain when they need to and that was me as well like i knew that if push comes to shove a couple of years ago that whatever needed to be done from a marketing perspective i could make it happen but it would just take so much effort it take, took so much sweat if i had a something on and i just wanted people to know about it we could make it happen but it was a lot of work and i realized that <clears throat> there were a lot of things that needed to be done in a sustainable, strategic and constant way. And those things needed systems to sit behind them and power them. Because as marketers, as business owners, we have a finite amount of energy. We have a finite amount of decision-making power. And if we're expending that on the little things like what should I publish? Where should I publish it? Or what am I going to say? Or am I doing a blog? Or am I, should I be doing this? Or who's going to edit that video? And who's checking that there's no spelling mistakes? You're making sure that it goes, that's got the right hashtags and all sorts of, there's so many micro decisions that happen as part of a content strategy that if you are trying to make those decisions on the fly, you will completely deplete yourself of energy and resources. And that's where you actually want to have the systems in place so that they carry you. So you can actually do these things consistently enough to see, is it working or is it not working? Because you might be doing great things and it might be starting to work, but your learning might be that you don't have a system in place and so you can't sustain it. And that's, I guess it's good in one sense if you actually realize that, but a lot of people don't realize it. It's they're putting in so much effort and not getting return. It would be much better to do less and, and document it. And when I say document it, it doesn't have to be complex. Like we use terminology in the marketing space and in the business space like SOP, standard operating procedure, and having something like that sometimes sounds so fandangled crazy that you think, oh, that's a, such a technical document. But really, it can be just a word document. And it is. Like in my agency, we have lots of these. We have loads of them, probably like 40 of them or 50 of them, something like that. Many of them are literally a word document. And they are step one, step two, step three, who does what? This is a screenshot. This is what it can look like. Then it goes to this person. Then this person does that. And once it's that, that happens. And it's literally a Word document. And then what we do for many of those processes is that we'll put it into our software and you know trigger tasks and things like that so that then it's, let's say, lets the right person know at the right time. But it doesn't have to be that fancy. If it's just you or you're running the content on behalf of a small business or it is your business and you're running the business and doing the client service and helping people and doing it is whatever it is that you do as part of your business and you're doing content as well, you really want to look to eliminate decisions because that is what's going to lead to overwhelm and burnout. You want to build in processes so that you have it scripted out and you just follow it. And periodically you review, as I mentioned earlier on, what is working and what isn't. And what is the metric that will tell you if it's working and if it isn't. Because if you're looking at the wrong things, 
then you're not in a position to improve your content because you don't know if it's delivering on what it was that you wanted to achieve in the first place. Sounds a bit kind of, I think, I think I got the point across. I think that that's kind of my, my main points. So, so we've talked about the strategy. We've talked about the systems and why you need to have those in place. We've talked about the need for experimentation and how to actually check if it's working or not. And so I've given you a lot of very high level strategic, but also very practical and tactical things that you could take and apply and look at your marketing and see, is my content strategy working? Am I seeing those incremental improvements? Am I even looking at the right things? If not, what should I be looking at? And what could I change to see those things start to, to and what could I try in the next month and the month after that to see if I do see that positive trajectory? Trajectory is very different. I mean, you may have your dips and you need to continue to read the market and, and stay ahead of, of and, and anticipate and continue to test and continue to iterate. But by and large, if you start to see incremental improvements, this is a really positive sign that I would encourage you to lean into. So if you take these things on board, you can then way more intentional, purposeful and outcome focused with your content and start to see major efficiencies happening. You may decide to strip back and do less and focus more squarely on those things that are going to move you to your goals and put in place systems that are going to support that. And that's an admirable thing because you're going to save your sanity as well as moving your, moving your customers closer to doing business with you. And if you've got a question or a comment on anything that I've said, please drop it in the comments and I will, I will answer those things because I love talking about this stuff and I love helping people with this stuff. But overall, if you found this useful, drop me a note in the comments if you liked it. If you know someone who would benefit from it, by all means, share it with them. If there's something in particular that you'd love to hear me talk about that would help you, drop a note in the comments because then I can actually bring something that's going to offer you some insight and help. I'm Nina Christian, appreciated the opportunity to talk to you and I will catch you again next time. Bye.